All right, I'm sick of it. I am sick of it. What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. Now I'm not necessarily excited about what's going on. I am absolutely fed up about the fact that it's snowing right now. And in fact tonight it's supposed to get down to 26 degrees. I am absolutely over that, especially given the fact that it was 60, 70, even 80 degrees for the past three weeks. And the lows were not even in the 30s, they were in the 40s and upwards of 50 degrees for the lows at night. So most of, uh, most of me, <laughs> almost all of me, was ready for it to be spring. And most of the nature around us was ready for it to be spring as well. I mean, all the grass is growing, the trees are budding, the birds are chirping, well, they always chirp, but the, the spring birds that are out, they were out. <laughs> and uh, you know, even our fruit trees were flowering as well. And so most of nature had already come to the conclusion that spring was here, and now you have this. Now we are not past our last frost date yet. So it definitely was kind of expected that we were gonna have some cold weather, but this cold and this abrupt uh, is a little bit unexpected. And so in today's episode, I am definitely excited to share with you some ways to prevent against frost or frost damage if you were to be caught up in this freak freeze, freak frost weather. Now, the first thing that you really need to do is assess plants that don't need any care at all. These are plants like cold weather stuff. Things like lettuce, spinach, kales, a lot of your, uh, well, all of your brassicas, broccoli, cabbage, uh, your kohlrabi, um, Brussels sprouts, things like that, they don't need any protection whatsoever. They're gonna be fine. Even things like Swiss chard and beets, they're gonna be fine as well. They're gonna survive just fine in cold weather. Then you have stuff that really could probably use some protection. Things that are kind of intermediate plants that uh, if you don't do anything at all, they're gonna die. And so you're looking at things like um, beans, corn, um, peppers are actually fairly cold hardy as well. They will die if they're, uh, if they're thrown into some freezing weather, but if you give them some protection, they are, they are, they are definitely something you can protect. Uh, things like uh, some of your herbs as well, rosemary, sage, um, and things like that, those are fairly, uh, you know, fairly cold hardy as well. They don't love cold weather, but they're not necessarily just gonna keel over and die. So those are ones you can actually protect. And then there are ones where you really need to, you know, if the weather's gonna get down to 26 degrees, you need to dig them up and get them in the house. And so those are things like, you know, tomatoes, those are things like squash, cucumbers, those are uh, a lot of, well, not a lot of, all of your summer crops. Your summer crops, you've gotta dig them suckers up and get them in the garage or in the house, give them some protection, because in 26, 28 degrees, nothing you're going to do is really going to save them. Then there are stuff like fruit trees, peaches, plums, cherries, apples, pears, blueberries, whatnot, that uh, are outside, you can't dig them up, you can't move them in the house, what do you do for those? And so in this episode, I'm gonna share with you some ways to protect your plants against frost for a variety of different ways. And then what you really need to do is just assess the plants that you want to save, assess the plants that can be saved, and do what you can to save the most, amount of, uh, the most amount of plants possible in your garden. And also go into this knowing that this is a freak event and freak events come out of nowhere. And sometimes you can't always save everything. The best thing you can do is try to save the most things possible. That way you can at least salvage some of your growing season. And if you do lose some things, just remember that seeds do, do grow very fast. Fruit trees, even though they might not bear fruit this year, there's always next spring. And it gives you something to look forward to. So your season is not by any means lost if you do lose some plants. And a lot of things in your garden will be just fine. So with that being said, I wanna get into some ways that you can protect your plants from a frost. So with tall things and big things like fruit trees, in the case of our plum here, or a lot of our peaches, cherries, apples, and pears, these are tall trees. These are large, uh, you know, large plants in the garden that they're very difficult to have good coverage. And so for these plants that are difficult to cover adequately, there are a few methods that you can try. The first one is one that is very reputable and one that a lot of orchards use, and that's called wall of waters. Now wall of waters is where you take either a hose or a sprinkler and you simply soak the tree down during the coldest parts of the night. This is typically between 4 a.m. and sunrise, 4 to about 6.30, 7 o'clock. When the sun starts rising, the weather starts warming up, and you're, you're pretty much out of the threat of, of, uh, of frost or freeze at that point. 
And so um, once, uh, you know, once you soak these trees down, as long as the foliage stays wet, the secret is that the energy going into freezing the water actually goes into freezing the water rather than the foliage and the, and the flowers. So you can actually get a lot of protection by doing that, but you have to soak them all the time. So it can be very time sensitive if, and also very cold if you're out here for the entire time with a hose, uh, you know, hosing down your plants. So what I like to do is use a sprinkler and just put a sprinkler in there. And uh, what I really like is those oscillating sprinklers that spray 360 degrees. And that way I can really get good coverage and the whole plant is gonna be uh, well covered. So that's one way that you can protect your plants is with wall of waters. The second thing that you can do is through what's called radiant heat methods. Now there's, those are kind of broken down to a few different ways. The first way is, and they're all based on fire, but the first one is with burn barrels. A lot of people will set up burn barrels if they have their plants planted in a block. For instance, we have our plants planted in a block here where we have a plum here, we have a, another plum here, we have a cherry in the back and a peach behind that. And they're planted in a square. In the center of that square is some open area. And what we can do is we can take a burn barrel and we can load it up with wood and start a fire. And what happens is the fire obviously will, will heat up the area, but will also heat up the metal that the burn barrel is made from. And that will give radiant heat that will provide about three to four feet of radiant protection against frost and freezing, and, uh, frost and freezing weather. So that's definitely one way that's very effective, but if your city does not allow burning or burn barrels in general, that's something you can't necessarily use. So if you can't use that, there's another method. And that method is using a, uh, a patio heater. Now patio heaters are run through propane and propane is, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a flammable gas. So um, it's expensive, <laughs> you know, you have to go fill up your propane tank and it might be 18 to $20. But if the crops that you're trying to save is worth well more than uh, $18 or $20 to you, it might not necessarily be worth $18 to $20 market value. You know, you might not, you might not get necessarily, uh, you know, 10, 15 pounds of, uh, of fruit off your trees. But if that fresh taste of fruit is what you value at, at $18 to $20, even if it's a couple fruits and it's worth saving, give it a shot. It's, it's really worth a try. The only downside is that those propane heaters, those uh, those patio heaters, they have a uh, they have a, a big shield that tends to shoot, uh, basically shoot the or radiate the heat down, and then it goes out from there. Also, it's very windy; the wind tends to blow the heat away. So those can be rather ineffective in those cases, and that's just because um, just because of the way that they work. But can be very effective and can also provide against uh, against freezing weather about two to three feet from where they're located. So you can put it kind of right in the center, kind of like you would a burn barrel, and you're gonna get some really good protection, especially if the night is calm and there's not a lot of wind. Now, the third way that you can protect your trees against frost is by using blankets. Now, blankets are very heavy, they're super insulating, and they're really good to use just because of the size of them. Now, there are other things that we'll get into like frost covering and, and frost fabric, but the reason why I don't use those on my trees is just because of the coverage. You have to have very good coverage. You have to have something large enough to really drape it over your, your entire tree. And some trees are far too, large, uh, far too large to even cover. And so if you have holes and gaps where cold air can get in, it's kind of like wrapping a bike. You know, you can wrap a bike with, with uh, gift paper, but everyone knows it's still a bike. And so there's really no fooling the cold weather when you wrap this with frost covering or, or uh, you know, a tarp or something like that where there's holes because the frost knows that underneath there there's something that it can get to and so uh, what you really need to do is have good coverage and that's why on a tree of this size something that's only about four feet wide by about uh, you know seven feet tall it's very easy to take a big bed sheet and throw over throw it over top and then maybe cinch it down in a few areas with some uh, with some bungee cord so it doesn't blow around and you're usually really safe with things like bed sheets now bed sheets are going to are going to provide about three to four degrees of frost protection. It's not ideal, it's not perfect for something that's getting down to 26 degrees, because 26 degrees with three to four degrees of frost protection is still about 30 degrees, but it's better than nothing. It's better than just doing nothing at all. So it's worth a try. Now, a lot of people ask me about using things like burlap. Is burlap effective? Is burlap as effective as using things like bed sheets or row covering? And the answer is no. The reason why is because burlap has a lot of holes. Those holes are basically like little pinholes where that cold is gonna get right through. Now, the reason why people use burlap on, on trees during the winter is to protect them against frostbite from cold shear wind. Now, that cold, dry wind is what dries out the tissue on the, uh, on the limbs and the leaves 
and so it prevents uh, them from coming out of dormancy in the spring. So a lot of people will wrap things like arborvitaes uh, with, with burlap, or they'll wrap um, you know, a tender tree with burlap, and that's just to pre uh, prevent against the dehydration from that cold wind. It helps cut the wind down, but it does not affect the temperature at all. There's actually really very little insulating properties to things like burlap, so burlap is a no-go. Now, uh, the next method that you can use is on your shorter crops, your stuff that is gonna be low to the ground, very easy to cover up, and that's where I really think uh, you know, frost covering with sheets is very effective. So let's go talk about that. All right, so with plants that are lower to the ground, like these gooseberries and currants, I'd much rather use blankets or frost blankets uh, or you know, bed sheets on plants like this just because they're easier to cover. You know, if you try to use a blanket or a bed sheet on a tree, like I said, there's so many gaps and spots for the, uh, for the cold air to get into that you're gonna have a lot of damage on those because anywhere where that cold air gets in, it's gonna freeze this, uh, the tender tissue and, and um, leaves and flowers on the plants. So these are just much easier covered with things like that. Now, uh, I, could, I would also use things like row covering and whatnot on my, on my vegetables in the garden as well. If I'm covering things like beans, peppers, peas, what have you, that's planted in the garden that can be protected, I would also use bed sheets and things on those. Would I use wall of waters on those plants? And I probably wouldn't. And the reason why is because if I have two methods to spare, let's say I have bed sheets and I have a sprinkler, I would much rather use the sprinkler on the taller trees that are gonna be more difficult to cover and use the bed sheets on the things that are lower to the ground and easier to cover. That way I can, again, kind of spread my resources out, divide and conquer, and hopefully save everything in my garden or more things in my garden than had I just focused all my resources on just you know one small area. So that's kind of just uh, one idea behind what you can do to, uh, to protect your plants. Now, uh, the other way that you can protect your plants is by using uh, what I call the kind of uh, dig up or fi uh, fight or flight. Now, um, dig up and run or fight or flight is kind of a, they're either gonna stay there and fight out the cold or they're gonna, they better take flight. And since your plants don't have wings, what you can do is you can dig them up. And that's what I really like to do if I get caught off guard with things like tomatoes in the ground, um, even peppers you can do this with as well. Just dig your plants right up, put them in a pot, throw them in the garage for a day or two, and then plant them back out in the garden. Sure, they might not like it, and yes, they might have some, some transplant shock, but it's a lot better than having them dead, right? So the kind of fight or flight technique or you know, dig it up and run is another very effective way at protecting your, your very tender plants in the garden from freezing weather. Now, you don't have that luxury with you know, perennials and large uh, you know, fruit bushes and trees that have been in the ground and are well established, you can't necessarily dig those up. So uh, that's why I really like to use those, that method with uh, some of the plants that I can dig up and I can actually save. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. Those are five ways to protect your plants from freezing weather or a freak freeze or a freak frost. I really hope that uh, you use this video to your advantage. Use this video to help you out. And uh, regardless of what happens, just remember that at the end of the day, a garden is still a garden, no matter if you have a bumpy, you know, a bumpy start or a, or a very smooth start. A garden is a garden, and just being out there is the best part. So uh, even if you have some losses, just uh, take that as kind of a learning experience and uh, roll with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. As always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel, reminding you to grow big or go home, and we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.